Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Sport here on YouTube and we are going to be previewing the 2018-2019 uh, Premier League season for one and only Liverpool FC. It's been a big summer for Jurgen Klopp, uh, both in the preseason and in the transfer window. Arguably out of all of the top six teams, they've had the best transfer window because not only have they filled in needs in their squad, but they've also brought in quality to match it as well. Uh, Fabino, for one, uh, one of the first signings uh, announced, of course, they had Cater. Uh, confirmed last year, but wasn't brought in until this year, so I don't know if you can count him or not, but, you know, uh, we'll leave, leave it at that. Um, Fabino, of course, confirmed from Monaco, 39 million, uh, and then Shakiri was not too far away after him, about two weeks or so later, from Stoke, 13 and a half, and then Alisson to shore up that uh, that goalkeeping line after the, the whole kerfuffle with... Uh, with Carrius over the past couple of months as well, including the Champions League and all that. But the less of that, I think, now for Liverpool fans, the better. It's in the past. It's in the past. Quick talking about the past, as people would say. Uh, Emre Chan, probably the most noble uh, departure from Liverpool, really, uh, in the transfer window after Juventus uh, released there on a free. Um, but really, you know, in fact, out with Chan and in with Fabino, and you know Liverpool have since gone on then to really improve their squad with uh, with further additions, especially in the goalkeeping department. You must be really happy as a Liverpool fan, Joe, that you know this is such a promising transfer window for Liverpool. Of course, it's it's been arguably one of the best windows in recent years for Liverpool. We filled most of our problem positions, obviously. Uh, well, we filled the problem position in goalkeeper, obviously. We've, we've found a mixed opinion on Carrius and Mignolet, so Mignolet could be off, we don't know yet, yeah. but, uh, with the deadline day looting. But Alisson, to sign a world-class goalkeeper, Brazil number one, and it proves how good of a quality he is. I've said this in the past, when he's keeping Edison out of the Brazilian side. So to sign a goalkeeper of, of Alisson's quality, who did well during the World Cup, he's got everything that we need, distribution, the height, the reflexes. He's played for big clubs before, he's played for Roma, mm -hmm. so obviously he knows the pressure of playing for a big side for Champions League football. That's a fantastic signing. We brought Shakiri in for £13 million. A man with experience, he's won titles in Germany and in uh, Switzerland with Basel. He, he won the Champions League, so he knows how to win trophies. Obviously, he's got Premier League experience. He's yeah. only 26, so he's got years left in him. Yeah. So that's another fantastic signing. Uh, Fabinho. I've, I've said this in the, the West Ham preview video that we needed a number, another number six. Mm -hmm. We've had Henderson and he's performed well in that role, but we needed that, a solid defensive midfielder who's going to break up the play, and that's what we've got in Fabinho. He does what he says in the tin, and he's going to be, hopefully, I can see him being a good addition. And Abby Cater, box to box. Yeah, should be, should be a, a great summer, really, overall for Liverpool. Um, and as you mentioned, Cater and Fabinho certainly could walk into the, the starting eleven for Liverpool as you would probably expect Shakiri coming off the bench and Alisson starting goal with a replace of Karius. Um it really it, in in essence it has been a, a good preseason for Liverpool. They got some uh, decent results, especially against City and United in the Champions Cup. Uh, also a good win against Napoli as well and then also um, making sure that this is secure the results against uh, the likes of Chester, Berry, uh, Blackburn Rovers and uh, Tranmere. Bit, a bit of a blimp on the transfer Rovers and the Berry games um, but I think in large part a lot of Liverpool players, uh, sorry a lot of Liverpool fans have dismissed those games because um, A, the squad wasn't at full strength or, or close to full strength, and B because Carrius was playing in goal in both of those games, so it's a bit of a bit of an unfair justification on the record. Um, how, how do you think the preseason has gone for Liverpool? Um, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's been quite promising, really, it's to show that you know got the players in, and it is looking like it, it's working on the pitch. Yeah, it's been. I think it's been fairly decent preseason. Obviously, we had the blip against Dortmund where we lost, but it was a game where the first one in America. It was all about fitness. They were just playing, never really got that second game. Yeah. And then Dortmund hit was three late goals later on when we made a bunch of changes. It was one of those disappointed to lose it, but it was not the most worrying thing. Obviously, Tranmere was a mix of youth and experience. And then obviously, we had Danny Ward first half and performed very well, freeing up at our time. Carriers coming in the second half. Yeah. And he did okay until he made the howl up of Tranmere's first goal, and then it just seemed to 
disintegrate from then. Yeah, yeah. but thankfully there wasn't much time left for Tramier to get any other goals. Yeah. Mm. The rest of the pre-season, City, result against City, all right, it was a youngish City side. It's still a victory against the Premier League champions. Yeah. So that was a good result. To batter Manchester United, whether it's a pre-season friendly or not, is always brilliant for Liverpool fans. <laughs> Shaqiri getting an overhead kick goal on his debut was yeah. just the icing on top of the cake. Napoli at the weekend was a good result as well because mm-hmm. it was a strong Napoli side. Both, both the teams fielded the strong squad. Obviously, at, later on in the game, there was more youngsters in play, but at which point Liverpool were already four nil up. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's been. A, I think it's been a good pre-season. Liverpool have had a good workout against top opposition. Even the lower league opposition gave us a good run, run out, and obviously the the players. You've had like Fabinho from the start, Katie from the start. They all played at Chester. I was at that game. And yeah. Performed well, so it's been good to have these new signings in from the start. Obviously, Allison's played his first game at the weekend, but them working together with the team and the team spirit and the team bonding can only be good for the start of the season. It certainly can be, um, and getting the results in the pre-season. Um, do matter because it builds that king team chemistry and that confidence approaching the season. And certainly, if you were to look at um, all the top six teams in all departments to be measured in, in transfers, preseason, everything like that, you would say Liverpool are probably at the top of the pile because you know they beat out City in terms of the transfers that they're bringing again to improve their squad. Whereas City, you know, they've only signed Mares and whatnot, um, you know, and they and they got the head of them in terms of as you mentioned, beating them in the preseason, uh, United is a non-factor really because of the fact that they've been inactive in the transfer window. So is Tottenham, uh, Arsenal. Um, while they while they did have a, a good preseason under Emery, you know they they don't they haven't had the star quality in terms of transfers that Liverpool have had. Uh, Chelsea, same applies really. Not many transfers in there whatsoever. So you know Liverpool certainly can hold themselves to a whole credit and at the top of the pile. Um, but when we look at the squad and look at ahead of the season, what Jurgen Klopp can do with the squad, we know what kind of a good player he is, and uh, sorry, good not a good player, good manager that he is. Um, but there's now, you know, I, I would think there's a lot of personalities in the squad now that deserve to be starting eleven people. You know, people like Georgi Winaldo and Oxley Chamberlain when he comes back potentially if he's able to come back from injury earlier on. Uh, as you mentioned, Jordan Henderson needed the depth of quality there for him. Um, is that the problem that Jurgen Klopp's going to have really uh, entering the season to find what is his strong, strongest starting eleven is? Because he's got so many players in his team now that are, are worthy of the spot. It's a problem, but it's a good problem mm. because obviously, previous seasons we haven't had the the strength in depth like Manchester United, City, Chelsea. They've had like double the squads, so they could pick three, four players from each position. We hadn't had that. We'd had a couple of players for that position, and then we'd have to dive into the academy. You know, twenty feet ago, oh, well. Pluck him out yeah. from there. Pluck him. So the strength and depth has been fantastic, and it's allowed us to loan a couple of the youngsters out. Obviously, Ben Woodburn's gone to Sheffield United to get some much needed game time. Yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, was wouldn't be for him leaving on the purpose because he's got good potential. So I'm happy that he's only on loan. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing. I think competition's good as well. It creates hunger, creates competition to win, and makes people more determined to not lose their place. It, mm-hmm. it raises everyone's levels. And obviously, we signed Allison that will hopefully raise Carrius and Mignolet's level of Mignolet's yeah. days and help them compete. They are obviously strength and depth in the goalkeeper's department as well, which is fantastic. Defensively, we've got defenders all competing for each position, two, three for each position now. And now midfield, that's sorted out. And attack, is, our attack's fantastic anyway. Yeah. So it's all about strength and depth, and that's what we've needed and we've lacked, and Jurgen Klopp sorted that. I think the only the only slight issue that might be is that you know you're still looking at the likes of Sturridge and uh, Origi or Solanke to really step up themselves really and to say you know if if God forbid touch wood if either Firmino or Sané or uh, it's not Sané uh, if Firmino or Mane or uh, Salah went down injured um, either one of those three players would be able to easily step up into the lineup and make sure that the attacking threat continues on for Liverpool uh, progressing forward, um, what what are your expectations really for Liverpool this season? Because a lot of talk on social media has been that you know Liverpool have won the transfer window, so now it's time for them because they spent so much money. It's time for them to put up a real title challenge, probably for the first time since uh, Brendan Rodgers had that uh, one season with Liverpool, and it went really to the wire to the last couple of games. What are you expecting from Liverpool this season? 
Well, obviously we made the Champions League final last year. It's fit us to build on that in the cup competitions and maybe reach another final. Hopefully win a trophy. Yeah. Uh, obviously top four should be minimum again, minimum requirement. I, I expect us, with these signs, we're all expected to push Man City for the title. Klopp said it's going to be hard, but we're going to give it a good go. So I expect us to at least give it a go, at least push City further. Yeah. I think fourth place is the minimum and a trophy. Yeah. But... We'll see what happens. Is, is there any pressure under Klopp for, to deliver a trophy, as you mentioned then? Or is it just get that Champions League spot? I think there's always pressure from the press. Does that yeah. make sense to, oh, you've spent this money, and obviously Mourinho's comments and yeah. trying to heat the pressure, trying to change mm. the mind games in that. But I don't think Klopp will listen to likes of Mourinho. As he said, it's my job to make it Yeah, happy, I was going to say that. So my, my goal this season is to make sure that Jose Mourinho smiles at least once or something like that. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. I think... Liverpool fans, we'd love to see a trophy, we'd love to see us compete for the title, but obviously top four is always the minimum aim because it brings in the money and it allows us to chop in the top bracket like we've been yeah. doing the last couple of seasons. Realistically though, you would expect us with these signs to be competing for the title. Mm -hmm. I think so as well. I think Liverpool just definitely have to be up there um, by 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 at least the end of April, I think, you know, even pushing pushing beyond that and to really drag out to the to the final games because if they don't then I think serious questions would be asked as to why so much money was spent on on only so few players when in the past, you know, Liverpool, as as we've mentioned in the past, Liverpool have always been contingently with the the rolling in terms of making things break even and things like that. So now they've spent the money, it's time to prove it on the pitch and to prove that investment was the correct one. Yeah. All right, so that's our Liverpool preview for the 2018-2019 Premier League season. Let us know what your thoughts about Liverpool are uh, this coming season in the comments box below. Can they make the top four? Can they challenge for City for the Premier League title? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more Let's Talk Sport content. We shall see you all very soon.